Hi, I'm Holly Baker at, from Fort Scott National Historic Site. I'm going to talk just a little bit about the establishment of the fort. It was established 175 years ago in 1842. The fort was established um, as one of many in a long line of forts from Minnesota to Louisiana on what was then the western boundary of the United States. Um, and this fort was placed about halfway between two forts that already existed, Fort Leavenworth about 150 miles to the north and Fort Gibson about 150 miles to the south. Um, the western boundary of the United States was then the, the western borders of the states of Minnesota and Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, and Louisiana. So this was really actually um, on the edge of the frontier in Indian Territory. Um, the fort was here to kind of keep two worlds separate, as it were. Um, European, Americans, the United States was on the eastern side of the boundary, and on the west was, um, was Native American Indian Territory. And the hope was that this would be a permanent home for Native Americans. It was designed to be a permanent Indian frontier. So the military had a presence along the way to keep, uh, to keep both sides safe and to keep um, you know, conflicts to a minimum. Uh, so in 1842, uh, the, the garrison that was actually stationed at another site of Fort Wayne um, marched up here uh, and, and uh, on May 30th to create this post. Fort Wayne had some issues. Um, it was in a swampy area and malaria was a real problem. So it was decided that that location was not suitable. This location here in Fort Scott, Kansas was chosen because it was high on a bluff near water. Now that the, the uh, there was something called the military road. It was how the army moved supplies and troops and materials up and down the western um, border. So this military road ran through all of the forts that I previously mentioned, including Fort Leavenworth and Fort Gibson. Uh, so the army knew it wanted to establish a fort on that military road where they were also accessible to water. They needed the water, of course, to drink, but also for, um, for transportation, as well as to, uh, to have a mill so that they could make lumber and actually build the fort itself. So Captain Benjamin Moore of the U.S. Dragoons and a company of, of scouts went around looking for locations to put this uh, to put this fort. They looked at the Little Osage, they looked at Dry Creek, as well as Big Sugar Creek, and they decided that the Marmoton was the right one. They especially liked that the location here was on a high bluff. So they would be away from the swampy malaria area um, and the diseases would not be as much of a problem. So it was then that a company of mounted Dragoon soldiers um, left Fort, uh, Fort Wayne, which was being closed down, um, and headed north in, in their ranks, led by Captain Min Benjamin Moore, again on, on May 30th, 1842. They arrived here at this location, and there was really nothing here except tall grass prairie and the beautiful trees around us. When they would have arrived, Mr. Moore, Captain Moore would have, you know, let the, the soldiers know, um, you know, we're here to, to protect the plains, we're here uh, to make a safe home for, for settlers, but we have, to, we have to create this fort from scratch. We have to create the barracks where all of you will live, we have to create the mess halls, um, we have to create the hospital which you see behind me. Um, so every single uh, uh, bit of this place, this beautiful fort and all of its 22 buildings were built by those soldiers. It took them several months, actually it took them several years to get it all started. When they first got here and it was just an open plain, they would have um, initially tented out, sleeping in tents, and then uh, would have built some rudimentary log cabins as shelter against the elements. They, uh, they would have brought with them a handful of supplies, again from Old Fort Wayne, and ordered new ones, um, like a, a uh, mill so that they could start making lumber. All of those supplies that they needed would have been transported up uh, the Missouri River 
over to Fort Leavenworth and then come down by, by wagon. They, once they were able to set up a lumber mill, they were able to start um, creating the wood that they would need to build this um, beautiful and amazing fort. So that first day was a momentous occasion, um, but it was also probably a little bit of an intimidating one, knowing that they had to, uh, to start from, from scratch to put this place, to, to raise these buildings, and they have done an absolutely wonderful job. Um, and we are very thankful for the 22 beautiful historic buildings that we have here today. So Fort Scott played an important role in the opening of the West and the story of America growing up in the 19th century. And I want to um, just welcome you all to visit us during our 175th anniversary year or any time. We have lots of activities and a lot to see here at Fort Scott National Historic Site.